So we will begin uh, our service at this time. Our call to prayer comes from James chapter five. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. And hear this greeting. In the lonely places, the wilderness where we stand forlorn, windswept and alone, your voice calls out, prepare a way for the Lord. In the dark places, the shadows where we hide our fears, embrace our tears, your voice calls out, prepare a way for the Lord. And uh, let me lead you in an opening prayer. O oh Lord, our good shepherd, you are the source of all true and lasting joy. We praise you for your power, which is beyond compare. We worship you for your wisdom, which is beyond understanding. You can meet all our needs. You restore the brokenhearted and heal the wounded. You have revealed yourself to your people and are building your church against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. How great you are, Lord. Fill our hearts with love as we respond by singing praises to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, the Old Testament reading. Comfort, comfort, all my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert, in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And now the hymn, uh, I'm going to sing it uh, because of the delay. If by any chance uh, we can hear you, which would be, I think, just Gary, because he's unmuted right now. Uh, do not sing along with me, uh, but otherwise feel free to. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people say, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and as dark shadows put to flight, rejoice. 
rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And now, the New Testament reading from Second Peter. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth, and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Uh, now, a uh, gospel reading. Uh, unless Jason was doing that, sorry. No, you can do it. Okay. Uh, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. I want to share something about joy in waiting. We continue to live the realities of social isolation and lockdown in many parts of the world. Though the crew change crisis seems to be heading in the right direction, there are still many seafarers who are over contract and many more at home waiting to get back on board. Some cruise companies, for example, have attempted restarts. Others are cautiously preparing their ships for an eventual time when they can get back to business in the new year. But a return to normal times still seems far away. In my country, in Canada, we wait uh, the end of the second wave of the pandemic. We will go through the Christmas period with limited or no time to see family outside of our own homes. In some ways, we will live Christmas like seafarers on board have always lived it, separated from our loved ones. Though separated, Christmas is still a big event in my country. Anyone who spends any time on the internet or social media at this time will see the ever-present advertisements about spending money to make this Christmas better than ever. Christmas presents and electronic gadgets will distract us and make the wait less noticeable. So much in these advertisements is about trying to feel better during the current pandemic helping us get our minds off the current problems. One writer that I read recently said that the smartphone and the iPad have done something radical in the modern world. They've solved the problem of boredom. If ever we have a break in our day, we simply 
pick up our screen and time will pass by. It's an interesting idea to consider that boredom has been solved, but perhaps it's also overstating the case. I'm not sure that boredom and the difficulties of waiting have been solved. In any case, I certainly look uh, uh, and long to get back to a time when we can see people again face to face. The problem of isolation for many will hurt this year. The holiday period will still be filled with time alone. Social isolation will mean loneliness for many, simply emphasizing more the wait for the pandemic to end. The pandemic has put emphasis on something that has always been part of our lives, that so often we need to wait. The problem is, however, is that we don't always wait very well. We tend to become impatient, even with a screen. It can be very hard to wait for many things in life. The experience of waiting and waiting is central to the story of Christmas. Consider the texts that we read today. The texts from Isaiah occurs at a time when the people of God were waiting for the Lord to act. At so many points in the Old Testament, in fact, the people longed for salvation to come, and they had to be patient. Waiting was a big part of their experience. The text from, new, uh, from Peter in the New Testament, Testament speaks of the believers longing for the new heavens and the new earth, a place where justice is at home. Waiting also in the New Testament is part of the life of a Christian. Just before the birth of Jesus, we meet a number of people in the Gospels who were waiting. The Messiah was coming and they needed to wait for him. The good news at that point was that the wait for Jesus was over. Jesus had arrived. Well, this theme of waiting is found throughout Scripture. But importantly, waiting in Scripture is not just about sitting on our hands trying to tune out the world and think happy thoughts, picking up the proverbial screen and, and trying to just let time pass by. Rather, waiting is very active. Isaiah links with Mark. As we wait, we need to prepare the way of the Lord. Peter shares that in our waiting, we should make an effort to be found by him at peace. The time of waiting is, in fact, a time of action, a time to put into practice the thing that we're waiting for. But we're in another time of waiting now. And our texts today say that this is no time to sit on our hands, but it's a time to act. And it's a time to remember the patience, joy, and the focus on the gift of Christ. I pray that you will be active in your waiting today. Christ has come, and he will come again. Amen. Thank you, uh, Jason. Now for an intercessory prayer. Uh, as you can see, uh, after I've read uh, each individual prayer, the response is, hear us, Lord of love and glory. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and for the time we can spend together in prayer. Hear us, Lord of love and glory. Keep us safe in your care during this time of pandemic. Hear us, Lord of love and glory. Protect seafarers from the virus. Help that crew changes can happen on time and without problem. Hear us, Lord of love and glory. 
Be with those who feel alone during this Christmas season. Hear us, Lord of love and glory. Help us to continue to marvel at the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hear us, Lord of love and glory. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Kevin and Jason, and for all those attending, as well as those who may be attending uh, at another time and listening to the recorded message. Hear these words, this parting word of God's blessing. The Lord direct you in all your doings with his most gracious favor and further you with his continual help that in all your work, begun, continued, and ended in him, you may glorify his holy name, and finally, by his mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for being part of this uh, time of worship and prayer. I uh, want to wish you all a very, very blessed Advent and uh, Christmas season. And as uh, you serve in, in various ways on board the ships and uh, meet with seafarers, or if you're meeting on ships, whatever the case may be, we wish you God's real blessing and peace and hope um, that he would be with you. And uh, even though it's a bit early yet, uh, we won't be meeting again until the new year. So I wish you all a happy new year too. And thank you for all that you do. God bless. <laughs>